My name is Barry here and you're welcome here to the Elfin Windmill in County Roscommon. It's the oldest restored windmill in Ireland. It was built in the early around 1730s, 1740s by your local Bishop, Bishop Singh, who was a big landowner at the time. And he built the windmill. Its main purpose is to grind corn, um, wheat and oats and the wheat is going to make brown brown bread and then the oats is used for to make porridge. So it was um, a local committee that came together in the 1980s and they restored the windmill to full work in order. It was left in ruins since 1837 so it was 150 years idle and the local farmer gave up the windmill and the site to the community. It started, restoration started in uh, 1992 by FOSS trainees and it finished in 1996 and it was opened by the international um, film star Gabriel Byrne. Uh, when the windmill was built in the early 1700s it was used um, to grind wheat um, by the local landowner Bishop Singh and a lot of the wheat was used and it would be bought by the local people around Elfin and some of it was exported as well to England at the time. It was in operation up until the 1837 when it was in ruins so only worked for about 100 years and um, then it was left idle then for 150 years after that. So we opened, a, we opened the windmill then to, as a tourist attraction in 1996 and we have people here from all over Ireland who came to see the windmill and uh, people from all over the world came to Elfin. Every year we get around uh, 12 or 13,000 uh, visitors coming to the windmill to see it. It's a fully working windmill and it's the only one in the west of Ireland. So we put on a sail canvas on the sails. There's four big sails here. They're 53 foot long from tip to toe. And you expose the canvas and that turns the sails. And then that turns a wind shaft, which is solid oak, two foot square, 22 foot long. And that is connected to a big brake wheel, which is seven foot three in diameter. And on the brake wheel, then there's 72 cog wheels. And they turn uh, what's an upright shaft. And the top of the upright shaft is a waller, which 11 spokes. So the 72 turn 11 spokes, and that turns a millstone. And the millstone is about a ton and a half weight. So every one revolution of the sails will turn the millstone six and a half times. So you want the sails turning around 15 to 20 times per minute and the millstones will be turning over 100 times a minute and you'll grind about 600 weight of cordon per hour, per hour. That's the output of the windmill. All going well and if, it's, um, if there's no wind you cannot start the windmill, that's the, that's the downside of it. And if it's too much wind, the millstones will be going too fast and won't grind the cordon. So you want a wind speed between 12 miles an hour and 30 miles an hour. And then the, the, when the, the uh, wheat is ground, it comes down to the bo bottom floor through a chute and then uh, the flour is brought off to make brown bread. It was just a, a tower and it's, it's 26 foot high and it was almost ready to fall. So we had to completely restore the tower first and we got scaffolding from the Roscommon County Council and it, it, we plastered it and we had to rise the roof, uh, the top of the roof was down so we had to rise it about a foot or a foot and a half. So it, it, and then we put a concrete rim on the very top to reinforce it and we plastered the outside also and then we put a, got a roof made, the roof was made here on the ground and it was lifted down to crane and all the timber that was used was Douglas fir timber and oak timber. We got the oak timber from down in Tipperary, Pasheen and Pally Boreen and we got the Douglas fir then from Tormy Mills in Mount Bellion Galway. So we got parts of the windmill from all over Ireland. We got a thatcher then from Sligo, Brian Rogers and he used organic rye straw grown especially down in Tipperary for us and that took about maybe almost um, two months there to thatch it and after we thatched it then we put on the um, the wind shaft which we got down from in Tipperary which is a solid oak tree 23 foot long two foot square so we put in that and then we put on the, the sails we made the sails down at the Elfin Mart uh, they, they provided the workshop there for us 
and the seals are all made out of Douglas fir timber. So we, we restored the windmill as it would have looked in the early 1700s. What we do here to put uh, the seals going, we pull down the seal here straight in a vertical position and then we pull up the canvas, a person has to climb up the top of the seals, up through the lats, up to the very top and tie the seals on manually. And then when you have one seal done, you have to turn the next seal down and put on the seal cloth the same way until you have the four seals uh, with the sail cloth on each sail to expose it fully to the wind. Also too on this windmill is unique, the roof turns around 360 degrees because you have to turn the sails into the wind to catch the full power of the wind. So at the back of the windmill there's a horse cart, cart wheel and on that you get a donkey and he pulls around the roof and there's seven tonne of timber in the roof. So that was the engineering back in the 1700s. This is our cartwheel down here on the bottom that turns the roof and this is the tail pole, the pole that connects to the roof and that turns the whole tail, the whole roof around about 360 degrees. There's a track all the way around about. So you connect, years ago what they used to do is connect a donkey here and he'd turn the roof and you'd grease the top of the roof and there's seven tonne of timber in the roof. So it's huge weight but it's, it's, it's simple enough to pull it around. And every windmill in the world has the exact same problem because the wind changes direction and you have to turn the sails into the roof. The home of windmills were in Holland and they started the revolution of windmills back around 1200. And then we got all, a lot of the ideas came here from in England. And, um, and Fred Hammond, when he was designing this windmill, there was no drawings or plans here, so we had to get a lot of the drawings and plans from similar windmills in England. Oh, there's a second door here on the windmill at the back. Every windmill has to have two doors, because if the sails are turning here at the back, you have to use a front door, and the sails are turning the front, you have to use a back door. So there's always two doors in every windmill. Some of the towers have only one door for security reasons, but every windmill has two doors. And see, see, the farmer comes in here, which is green, and he's pulled up manually up through the trap door, up to the next floor where the two millstones are. And just overhead are the two millstones, and the top stone rotates, and the bottom stone is stationary. The top stone is called the runner stone, and the bottom stone is called the bed stone. And they grind the cordon between the two stones. You're talking about a ton and a half weight of each stone. So that crushes the cordon, comes down this chute here, goes into this bag, and you go off and go off out this door then, which you're off to your um, off to your baker with the flour for the flour. Now, this is here is called a tethering gear. So the miller is all standing here and watching the grain coming down. And this tethering gear adjusts just the stones so you can see how fine the grain is or how coarse it is. So I turn this up here now and I'm moving this beam up, that moves the iron up and separates the two stones ever so slightly. So the further away the two stones are the coarse of the grain will be and then tomorrow if you want it's very fine you let down the tethering gear and that will mean the grain is very fine for flour. So the miller is all standing here watching the grain coming out and adjusting it. This is all Douglas fir timber and all the beams here are Douglas fir timber. They're all 10 inches by 12 inches big beams. You see there was no steel used that time, it was all timber. The next floor is where the two millstones are and this is where all the work is done on the next floor. So the miller, he pulls up the sack of cordon up here through the, from the bottom floor, up through the trap door like this here. Goes, uh, the sack goes in here into this hopper, put the hopper here and when the sails are turning, it turns this wind shaft and you see this here, how oh, this chute is made here like this. So when this turns it's square, so it hits off this and the great and the chute goes over and back like that. That time there were no springs, all they had was a piece of rope, a piece of timber to pull it over and back. So the quicker the, sea, the, quicker the wind is blowing, the quicker this will go. This chute is regulated by the wind speed. And if you have, like today, if you have very little wind, the chute will be going very slow. 
This is called the damsel. So the seal, the grain goes in here into the middle of this stone. And then this is the top stone. And this rotates. And the bottom stone there, the stone is about a foot and a half deep. And the bottom stone is stationary. So this stone rotates around. And underneath the stone is called the dressing of the stone. So there's actually grooves taken out. Just like your fingers together, it's grooves. Because if it's a smooth surface like that, the grain won't crush. So you have to have a, the dressing of the stone. So that's a very skilled job. And every couple of years you have to take the, two, the big stone here apart and get a hammer and chisel and dress the stone. So that crushes the cordon and goes down through the chute, down to the next level. Now, so as I was saying, every time the seals turn once, this stone will turn six and a half times. And the seals need to be traveling around 15 to 20 revolutions per minute. So this stone will be traveling over 100 times a minute. And you'll grind about 600 with a cordon per hour. This stone is made out of French burr. The French burr is a great stone, it's a hard stone. It comes from outside Paris, but very expensive. It had to be imported from Paris years ago. A lot of the other stones are granite stone coming from the Morton Mountains and the Wicklow Mountains. So you can know how good, how wealthy the, the miller is by the stone. If you see a French bar stone here you can know this is a wealthy miller in place. That was um, just re waterville that stone millstone came from. Uh, the, the same, exact same millstone is used in a water mill and a windmill. They're all about, they're about a foot and a half deep and they're about three foot, three and a half foot in diameter and they weigh about a ton and a half weight. So the stone keeps crushing us, you see. And if you, you have to keep, make sure the miller here has to keep the grain in this hopper all times because if you let the millstones run dry, the stone will go into dust. So it's very essential here and this place here, working here that you make sure the, the, the grain is in here all the time and the hopper is going. So this is a very busy place to be, about three or four people working here at all times. And years ago it was very, very, very noisy as well. You can hear the, the shoot here going all day long. So it was very hard and it'd be very dusty as well with grain. So it was hard work years ago. Up there now, the top floor is where all the the, the, um, the wind shaft and the brake wheel and the cog wheels are all left open. We left everything open as it was would, would, like 300 years ago. That's why the stairs here are so narrow. So there were no comforts out years ago. Over here on the top floor of the windmill. This is where all the workings of the windmill are. Now the, the, the way the, the whole roof revolves around. You see this pole here under the window? That's connected to the cartwheel on the very bottom. That's the tail pole. And that's connected to this roof here. And you can see all this roof here is able to revolve around. This here, there's nothing on the roof, only sheer weight. These here are the truck wheels. So they keep the roof in place. These are the skid pads. So the roof actually skids along the top of the wall plate here like this. There's 13 of these skid pads along here just to keep the roof off the wall plate and there's eight of these truck wheels and if we go around here uh, the other side you'll see it better the roof comes along around here What's that chain there? and you see there's two iron wheels here up here just under this and those two iron wheels go around like a railway track on top of the wall plate all the way around so everything above our head is movable. The seven ton of timber here is all doing the sir timber and oak timber. So that has to move around. The seals are here in the front today, but they could be here in the back tomorrow, depending on the wind, how the wind is blowing. So the way the, the, the windmill operates is the seals are the center of the four the center of the four seals are just out of this window, and each seal is mortared through this piece of timber out of this window and the other one at right angles. So when the seals move, it moves this wind shaft, which is all solid oak, and this is connected here to the brake wheel, which is an oak wheel, seven foot three in diameter, and on the brake wheel then the 72 cog wheels, and the 72 cog wheels drive the 11 spokes here on top of this waller, 
And this is connected to the upright shaft, and that's connected to the top millstone. And the top millstone revolves every time this moves. So it's all interconnected. Everything in the roof here is connected to each other. Because if you were strong enough, you could lift the roof up. There's absolutely nothing holding the roof down. That's the biggest problem in a lot of windmills, when there was a big storm on. It could, the storm could lift the roof away. But what's holding it is, that's why this is all oak timber and an oak wheel. So the weight of the oak wheel and the oak wind shaft holds the roof on place. But as you can see, there's absolutely no ropes or anything holding down the roof. This is all Douglas Fir timber, 10 inches by 12 inches. And, that's, and then to stop the windmill in the evening when you want to go home, this is a brake shoe. The brake shoe is separate than the brake wheel. So as you see, this is made out of elm wood. So it starts here, stationary. It goes right around the full wheel. It's just like catching your arm. Right around the full wheel, back to here, and the beam there with a rope, and that pulls it up and down. So it's just like catching your arm and just releasing it. And when you release it, the wheel goes round. And when you tighten it, it holds it in place. And the beam there is Douglas Fair beam. It's just by sheer weight, that's what's holding it. We'll go back here and just take off the brake here now. I can take off the brake here. I just pull this up here and catch it on a hook. And that's connected here to the brake shoe. And the brake shoe then is separated from the wheel like that, ever so slightly. And that'll let the wheel go right around the boat. And then to put on the brake, you just give that pull up here. And, and the weight of that beam pulls, pulls it down and holds it and tightens the brake. The, all the, the cog wheels here are made out of timber. And they, this is here our shear bolt. So if something goes wrong, if the, if the, if the, um, if the, if the sails or anything like that go in trouble and get caught, the, the, one of these, one of these um, cog wheels will break. And they turn into this here, and these are all timber as well. You can see these timber rollers are just here like this. But they're easy to replace. Or if the, if the millstones get um, blocked up with grain, something breaks and these snap here. They just snap like that, but they're easy to replace. And then to engage the windmill, you can see this here is off centre at the minute. So it's just ever so slightly out. And this is connected to this stone, and this is connected to this beam here. And we'll push it in here like this. And that engages the cogwheels with the upright shaft. And the reason there is because um, if you were coming in with grain today, yeah, all of that to have grain between the millstones. But if the farmer coming in with grain was late and you didn't want to stop the whole windmill, what you do is here, you just pull this back here and you disconnect the upright shaft ever so slightly and you don't have to stop the windmill every time. Because if the, gra if the, gra if the millstones run without any, any grain between the two millstones, the stones will go into dust. And then when the farmer comes in with the grain, all you have to do is push this in here and engage it and slow it down or speed it up with the brake here. So that's the operations of it and that's what they used to do, they were able to do that 300 years ago. If, if, the, if, the, if the connections here, there's a connection here that's about it's 3 eighths of an inch to play with. So if, the, if this is ever so slightly out, it won't work. So this, the cogwheel has to meet it here, but if it's ever so slightly out, it won't turn this. And if it's too far in, it'll just break it. So the engineer in here is within, is within 3 eighths of an inch and 7 tonne of timber. This just, this, the catch is exposed. So there's a sheaf side by side. This is organic rice straw that grown in Tipperary. And these are the scallops. 
just hazel rod or sally rods and they keep it in place because there's another layer attached out of the first layer there could be three or four layers and the scallops keep it in place and you can see there's a gap here for the roof to revolve but it's also good for natural ventilation so the ventilation comes in here and you look up through the thatch up to the ferry ceiling and it's still bone dry and that was done in 1995 so it's 25 years old and still dry as the first day and you can see this the, the color of the thatch never changed and even in the the, the, the thatch here you can see the the seed head is still on the thatch all those years later